Now at nine, Spire shares some tips to help save on your heating bills. Plus, we'll have tips to prevent hypothermia and frostbite ahead of the coming deep freeze. And the Miner's Home Museum in Southeast Kansas gets a historic addition. The four states most watched news starts now. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. Prepare for colder weather. The temperature is going to drop. Chief Meteorologist Doug Hetty joins us with a first look at the forecast. Well, it definitely turned out to be a pretty mild day for us today. Average high is only 44, but 58 was our high, and I hope you enjoyed it because we have huge changes which are going to start to work in really here in just a few hours. A lot of us still sitting into the 50s, but look at Iola. Look at Yates Center dropping into the 30s as that Arctic air is going to plunge in. It's going to stay windy tonight as well. It's going to be windy the next couple days, so that means very low wind chills. Now, we do have a winter weather advisory. In effect, uh, Oklahoma, Arkansas, southwest Missouri, and a sliver of Kansas. This isn't for anything heavy, but as the rain pushes through over the next few hours, even some thunderstorms we are going to get, um, you can actually see them building along the I-44 corridor, but as that water on the roadways starts to freeze and you add in a little bit of freezing drizzle, we could see some slick spots as we get into the morning hours. So we're going to be talking more about this and what is to come all coming up here in just a bit. Tanya. All right. Thanks, Doug. As the temperatures drop, Spire Energy is sharing some tips to help you save on your energy bill. They recommend sealing areas around your home where air could get in, including windows, chimneys, closets and doors that lead outside. You might also save by replacing furnace filters and installing a programmable thermostat. You do an annual furnace check is is advised, um, you know, all, and also a, a, a thermostat uh, to where electronic thermostat to where it'll turn down in the evenings when you go to bed and then maybe when you're away will really help the efficiency of your furnace and help to keep your home at a comfortable temperature. For more tips to help you save this winter, go to our website at koamnewsnow.com. With dangerously cold weather moving in, it's important to be aware of the risk of hypothermia, which can set in within 15 minutes. Nicolette Tzengara has more on how to prevent it if you have to be out in the cold. Or if you, your loved ones are starting to be confused, if it, not answering questions properly, not knowing where they are, if they're starting to show some of those signs, that's an indication that we need to be involved in the emergency department. Other symptoms of hypothermia include shivering, a weak pulse, and delayed reactions. Most of the time, slowly warming the body indoors with dry towels or blankets will warm the body properly. Well, well this is our warm place to get away, too. Working outside poses many challenges in extremely hot or cold temperatures. When you work with HVACs, that's almost a guarantee. This means watching the forecast to best prepare workers for the worst. I mean, I found myself stranded for over eight hours before on some backcountry roads um, trying to get out to some HVAC calls. Brett Callahan prepares his workers with warm winter gear and limits their outdoor exposure. With the sub-freezing Arctic air coming in, we ask them not to try to stay outside for more than 10 minutes at a time without coming in to warm up. The most important part about treating hypothermia is doing so slowly. The last thing you want to do after experiencing frostbite or hypothermia is hop into a boiling hot shower. Then when you get out of the cold and into the rewarming, if you do it too rapidly, when they start to dilate, can actually damage those tissues. Um, usually it goes most distal, meaning the farthest away. So our fingertips and our toe tips, basically. And they'll start to change color. Um, they also will start to, they can, start to get blisters. So you actually see raised blisters and the tissue will actually start to come off or peel off. And so those are some of kind of the doctors stress that children and elderly people are at the highest risk for hypothermia, especially if they're on medications that alter their perception of the temperature. An animal shelter in Miami is offering residents free straw to keep animals warm during the coming deep freeze if they cannot be brought inside. Residents can pick up the straw at Catcher Kihi Animal Shelter at 725 D Street Northeast. The shelter bought the straw using a donation from Nestle Purina Pet Care. It's available on a first come, first serve basis. 
We are still awaiting an update from Liberty Utilities concerning the collapse of a wind turbine in Barton County, Missouri. As we told you yesterday, the turbine was part of the North Fork Ridge wind farm off of Highway 43. Liberty says no one was hurt in the collapse. We've reached out to the company for any information on the cause of the collapse and on their investigation into the incident. We have not yet received a response. Well, the Miners Home Museum in Franklin now has another piece of history thanks to a donation that was moved in today. KOM's Amber Jenkins has more. The Miners Hall Museum is receiving a piece of history in the form of a 30,000 pound Inslee model K-12 drag line. We had to disassemble the boom first. It was up in the air. The machine's not operational. So we had to take the boom down with another crane. And then we used the uh, excavator and skid loader to pull it up on the low boy trailer we have here. Back in the glory days, this drag line was used to mine for clay in southeast Kansas. Now it's a piece of history. As far as drag lines go, it's not a very big one. But it, it's very important because these machines are being scrapped all the time. They're worth more in scrap than, uh, than they are to most people. The drag line will sit in the museum showcase field along with other mining antiques. It's going to be so wonderful to have it on our oh, site. Yeah. I think it's going to be uh, a little while because we've got a, a pad to put around it. And if, but I mean, as far as driving by, you can take a look at it. It'll be here. The museum is preparing to add an even bigger drag line after this one. This is the small machine we're moving for Miner's Hall. Uh, the other machine we're moving weighs around 500,000 pounds. And uh, it's going to go about 40 some miles, but it's going to be a lot bigger project than this. It fills a big hole in, in our display, and it's kind of an introduction to the page, the big drag line that's coming later this year. Reporting in Crawford County, Amber Jenkins, KOAM News. Well, the larger drag line will be delivered to the Miners Hall Museum in the coming months. Coming up, we'll look at some healthy snack choices that won't hinder your health goals. When it comes to calories, how many you should consume in a day varies from person to person. An average adult generally requires 2,000 calories daily. That's according to the FDA. But a recent study suggests some may be blowing many of those calories on snacks. Mandy Gaither has a look at the research and some healthy snack choices that won't hinder your health goals. From chips to crackers and sweets, when an afternoon pick-me-up is needed, you may just grab what's easy. The way we snack is just kind of these episodic little grazings throughout the day, and we never really think about how much they actually add up. Chris Taylor with Ohio State University is senior study author of a new study that suggests many adults consume up to 25% of their daily calories from snacks. Because we're looking at a fairly substantial amount of our calories. Um, it's a considerable source of added sugar, saturated fat, sodium uh, that we're getting in the day that also don't come with a lot of nutrients. So that your snacks don't derail your health goals, Taylor says it's important to plan for them just like you would a meal. Having hummus on hand that I can then use as a quick snack instead of having to rely on some foods that may not contribute as much to my uh, total nutrient needs. Other healthy snacks include fruits and veggies, nuts and nut butters, as well as seeds. And Taylor says to beware of stealth calories in some beverages. When we get a blenderized coffee drink or um, drinking a sugar sweetened beverage, those calories we don't often think about when we drink, about, drink them as snacks. Well, Doug is next with a complete look at the forecast. And later, Missouri Southern and Pitt State basketball both hit the floor today. We'll break down their matchups in sports. Well, it definitely turned out to be actually a pretty mild day for January today. Temperatures uh, into the upper 50s, but huge changes moving in. I'm sure you've noticed the winds have really picked up. Here's a nice shot looking at downtown Joplin, the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex. Uh, the winds are going to stay strong as well. But look at this Arctic air. It's 9 in Denver, 9 in Goodland. We have 4 in Rapid City. Lincoln is sitting at 10. 
So all this cold air is going to be sliding in, and it'll be here by the time you wake up in the morning. So the winds are going to switch around out of the northwest, and we're going to have gusts 30, upwards to 40 at times. And of course, with that colder air working in, that's going to give us those wind chill factors. So look at our wind gusts by morning, 30 to 40. They calm a little bit during the afternoon, and then they pick up again as we get into Saturday, keeping those wind chill factors very low. In fact, here's our future feels, meaning what it's going to feel like to your skin. So by tomorrow afternoon, most of us, 0 to 5 degrees. Now, as we get into Saturday morning, wind chills minus 5 to minus 10, and then check this out. By Sunday morning, it's going to feel like minus 20 to minus 30. 30 degrees, which is kind of crazy. Winter weather advisory in effect uh, just really through mid-morning tomorrow in the purple counties. And this is going to be due to just a little bit of ice, a little bit of snow. Not a huge deal, but we can have some slippery roads out there as this wave rotates through. It really kind of develops as it passes by. However, we are seeing some showers and thunderstorms popping up northeastern parts of Oklahoma, uh, and these are pushing off toward the north and to the east, really from just south of Benita back toward Tulsa. Uh, these are going to ride north, right along the I-44 corridor. Not expecting anything too strong or severe, but it may get a little bit loud out there with some thunder and lightning over the next couple hours. You can see this batch working through, temperatures dropping, and then once we get after about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, a little bit of freezing drizzle is going to set in. Maybe a few sleet pellets, a few snow pellets. We're not going to have much wintry weather, but there could be a few slippery spots tomorrow morning. So just keep that in mind. Clouds stick around all day. Look at this. Upper teens by noon. We warm back into lower 20s for highs, but that is it. Clearing out tomorrow night. Bottoming out near 10. And then as we get into Saturday, we may get a few snow showers, but temperatures only right around 20 for a high. All right, weather impacts. Uh, low on the snow, but just because we could have some slick spots, we'll go moderate on ice. And, of course, cold and wind is going to be on the high side. Uh, I don't expect much in the way of snow, maybe a dusting, maybe a half an inch. But, again, we could have a glaze of ice across the region. And we have a better chance for accumulating snow working in here Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening. And with the very cold temperatures, anything that does fall would stick. Alert days due to the cold the next few days. Snow showers back in Sunday and Monday. Staying cold all the way through next week. Tanya? I'm not looking forward to that cold. Well, a reminder, many communities across our area have warming centers where people can escape the cold, and they include a number of libraries, senior centers, and other facilities. Some are open only when temperatures drop below 32 degrees, and access might be limited to business hours. Many will have specific rules to ensure public safety. You can find a list of dozens of area shelters along with contact information on our website. And that's at koamnewsnow.com. Well, coming up, finding the best deal for a big purchase. First time home buyers are optimistic about buying a home in 2024. I'm Kelly Severi with Fox Business. Coming up, the unexpected places where they may have the best luck. Electric vehicles made in Oklahoma are now hitting the streets in the Sooner State. The canoe vehicles were made in a plant in Oklahoma City. Last week, the state received the first three. They will be going to the Oklahoma Office of Management and Enterprise Services, the Department of Corrections, and the Department of Transportation. The DOT says they will be using their vehicle to tour the state, talking about electric vehicle infrastructure. Well, small and mid-sized towns are proving to be the hottest options for buyers starting their home ownership journey. Fox Business correspondent Kelly Sabiri has more. More Americans are optimistic about buying a home in 2024. A new survey from Realtor.com shows 61% of first-time home buyers saying now is a good time to buy. There are typically pockets where home prices are a little bit lower than the surrounding metro area which make them a good place to buy in and get an entry-level home. As one of the biggest purchases consumers will make in their lives, affordability is a major decision driver. First-time home buyers continue to face a relatively challenging market, but there are some improvements. Those in the market for a new home might find the best luck in some unexpected places. Realtor.com's list of best markets for first-time home buyers includes Arondequoit, New York, Benton, Arkansas, Winterset, Iowa, 
Newington, Connecticut, Council Bluffs, Iowa, Cheektowaga, New York, Grand Rapids, Michigan, Moore, Oklahoma, Mattydale, New York, and Riviera Beach, Maryland. Well, you may not have heard of uh, Benton, Arkansas, or Mattydale, New York, you've likely heard of the metro area that, um, that these uh, towns and cities are within. All of the markets on the list are priced below the U.S. national average. In the 12 months ending at the end of 2023, the typical home price for a U.S. listing was right around $382,000, uh, but the home prices in these markets are well below that. So they represent pockets of affordability with lower priced homes that are great for entry-level buyers to consider. Realtor.com also considered average commute times and forecasted price growth when creating this list. In Chicago, Kelly Saberi, Fox Business. Up next, an upcoming film festival in Webb City, Missouri is featuring a movie spotlighting a Parsons, Kansas fashion trailblazer. The Route 66 Theater in Webb City will host the Great Wonders Uplift Film Festival this week through Saturday. Attendees will be able to watch a musical movie that tells the story of a Parsons, Kansas fashion trailblazer. KOM's Fernanda Silva spoke to the director and lead actress of Nellie Don the Musical Movie. She created that in between. I want to go out and look nice, but I don't want to wear a petticoat and tights. <laughs> and women at home had like scrubs that they would wear frocks for doing the house. And her brilliant idea was like, why do we have to wear gross scrubs, ugly, frumpy things around the house? What if they were beautiful? And that kind of bridged the gap for women's daytime wear. The creative mind actress Julie Pope is referring to is Neil Quinlan Donley Reed, a Parsons, Kansas fashion trailblazer. Nellie Don the musical movie offers a glimpse into the life of one of the first self-made female millionaires in her significant contributions to the fashion world in the 20th century. Obviously, she has all these amazing achievements in history, you know, the money, the dresses, the factory, being a woman at the time doing all of that was um, incredibly revolutionary. Uh, but what I think I was so fascinating was her personal story. And that's really where the musical is really cool. The film features some of Neil's dramas, dealing with an alcoholic husband and business partner, an affair with a United States senator, and the fake adoption of her biological son. The movie was written and directed by Terrence Somali, great great nephew of the real Neil Donnelly Reed. I always knew that the Nelly Don story was an interesting story, but it wasn't until I began my research uh, into it that I realized that not only was she kidnapped, but she was rescued by the Kansas City Mafia. In our story, in our presentation of it, the Mafia uh, are the good guys. According to the director, Nell's rise to fame comes from a game-changing invention, the house dress, leading to 75 million global dresses sales. The story just resonates with a lot of people because it's a great American story. Uh, it is a rags to riches story. It is a woman's story. Uh, it has uh, uh, a lot of, uh, it's a love story. It's a mother's love story. Why would you encourage people from Parsons, from where she's from, to go out and watch that movie? She had these big dreams that were bigger than Parsons. What we really wanted people to take away was that if you want to dream big and you want to go for it, like, you can absolutely do that. Reporting in the four states, Fernanda Silva, KOEM News. Nelly Don, the musical movie is scheduled for screening at the Route 66 Theater in Web City this Friday at 1 p.m. 30 more minutes of news, weather and sports is coming your way. Vernon County authorities say a county jail inmate is dead after an apparent overdose. Plus, the families of six missing St. Louis area residents are concerned their disappearance could be connected to a cult. You're watching the Four States Most Watched News. This is KOAM News at 9 on Fox 14. I'm Tanya Bach. Police in Aurora, Missouri say a man stole a gaming machine from a store by pretending to be from a company called Torch and walked out with it. And this is surveillance video of the incident. It happened around 6 yesterday, 6.30 yesterday evening at the Shriner store at 3100 South Elliott in Aurora. 
Authorities are now searching for the man in the U-Haul box truck he loaded the machine onto. The license plate number of the truck is H is AH27088 with an unknown state. Authorities in Vernon County, Missouri say an inmate at the county jail died last night of an apparent overdose. They say jail staff discovered three inmates in a cell were overdosing. Two of them are now recovering, but one died. Missouri State Highway Patrol is taking over the investigation. The families of six people who went missing from Berkeley, Missouri, want to know their loved ones are okay. After police believe their mysterious disappearance is part of a religious or spiritual cult. Diamond Palmer spoke with one of the families and has more. Cartisha Morgan is pleading for someone to come forward with information about her daughter, Michaela Wickerson. Berkeley police say Wickerson is one of six people who were influenced by a cult leader and disappeared from North St. Louis County in August of 2023. Morgan says her daughter stopped working, stopped all communication and abruptly moved out to this home on Graham Lane. She believes her daughter is dealing with a severe mental illness. Uh, that she was uh, probably suffering from postpartum depression. And these people online and they just preyed on her weakness. Among those missing are Wickerson, her three-year-old daughter, Malaya, and four others, Jerry L. German and her son, Ashton Mitchell, and adults, Naman Williams and Michaela Thompson. Berkeley police believe they are following the teachings of a man named Rashad Jamal. Among other things, they say he taught totally disconnecting from family, practicing polygamy, and meditating nude. Carrie Roberts is a neighbor and witnessed that nude meditation. She told me she knew Michaela Wickerson. From beginning to then, um, it was totally different. She cut out her house, she started growing dress, and her baby used to come play in the yard with my, uh, my, my nephew, and all of a sudden she stopped letting the baby come over. Meanwhile, Morgan is pleading that her daughter and the others just let family know they're okay. I know that people have many different opinions of this, but if it was their family member, everybody wants to know that their family member is well. She chooses to still stay uh, out. I just would like to know that her and my granddaughter are safe. That's all. If she can just contact us and let us know. Anyone with information about the missing people or their whereabouts is asked to call the Berkeley Police Department. A little bit later, telling what's real and what's not. California is making a big push to have kids acquainted with the do's and don'ts of AI and the media. I'm Eben Brown in Miami. I'll have that story straight ahead. Well, it definitely turned out to be actually a pretty mild day for January today. Temperatures uh, into the upper 50s, but huge changes moving in. I'm sure you've noticed the winds have really picked up. Here's a nice shot looking at downtown Joplin, the Cornell Arts and Entertainment Complex. Uh, the winds are going to stay strong as well. But look at this Arctic air. It's 9 in Denver, 9 in Goodland. We have 4 in Rapid City. Lincoln is sitting at 10. So all this cold air is going to be sliding in, and it'll be here by the time you wake up in the morning. So the winds are going to switch around out of the northwest, and we're going to have gusts 30 upwards to 40 at times. And, of course, with that colder air working in, that's going to give us those wind chill factors. So look at our wind gusts by morning, 30 to 40. They calm a little bit during the afternoon, and then they pick up again as we get into Saturday, keeping those wind chill factors very low. In fact, here's our future feels, meaning what it's gonna feel like to your skin. So by tomorrow afternoon, most of us zero to five degrees. Now, as we get into Saturday morning, wind chills minus five to minus 10, and then check this out. By Sunday morning, it's gonna feel like minus 20 to minus 30 degrees, which is kind of crazy. Winter weather advisory in effect uh, just really through mid-morning tomorrow in the purple counties. And this is going to be due to just a little bit of ice, a little bit of snow. Not a huge deal, but we can have some slippery roads out there as this wave rotates through. It really kind of develops as it passes by. However, we are seeing some showers and thunderstorms popping up northeastern parts of Oklahoma, uh, and these are pushing off toward the north and to the east, really from just south of Benita back toward Tulsa. Uh, these are going to ride north right along the I-44 corridor, not expecting anything too strong or severe, but it may get a little bit loud out there with some thunder and lightning 
over the next couple hours. You can see this batch working through, temperatures dropping, and then once we get after about 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, a little bit of freezing drizzle is going to set in. Maybe a few sleet pellets, a few snow pellets. We're not going to have much wintry weather, but there could be a few slippery spots tomorrow morning. So just keep that in mind. Clouds stick around all day. Look at this upper teens by noon. We warm back into lower 20s for highs, but that is it. Clearing out tomorrow night, bottoming out near 10. And then as we get into Saturday, we may get a few snow showers, but temperatures only right around 20 for a high. All right, weather impacts. Uh, low on the snow, but just because we could have some slick spots, we'll go moderate on ice. And, of course, cold and wind is going to be on the high side. Uh, I don't expect much in the way of snow, maybe a dusting, maybe a half an inch. But, again, we could have a glaze of ice across the region. And we have a better chance for accumulating snow working in here Sunday afternoon into Sunday evening. And with the very cold temperatures, anything that does fall would stick. Alert days due to the cold the next few days. Snow showers back in Sunday and Monday. Staying cold all the way through next week. Tanya? Brr, definitely cold. Well, the Midwest is in for a major winter storm with possible blizzard conditions set to blast places like Chicago and Milwaukee with heavy snow and strong winds. Fox Weather's Robert Ray has more. The third major storm of the week is taking shape as it moves through the central plains and up into the Midwest. The whole weekend is looking to be well, somewhat salvageable, except for the Arctic blast that follows behind. I think people get used to the fact that we get missed sometimes because of the warm lake water, because of the storm track, so they don't take it as seriously. But I do know Chicago very well. We adapt quickly. Winter weather alerts are in effect from Nebraska to the Great Lakes, with another foot of snow set to fall. Blizzard conditions are expected to develop Friday as wind gusts 40 to 50 miles per hour for hours. Chicago and Milwaukee may find themselves in the bullseye with blizzard conditions for the first time in years. And that Arctic air is on the move. In Chicago, highs will struggle to reach double digits on Sunday. So when the snow starts coming down, people will take note and then they'll stay home most likely and be safe and maybe order DoorDash or something inside. Through next week, over 200 million people will experience a temperature plunge nearly 30 to 50 degrees below average. Wind chills across the plains, well, they're going to dip 30 degrees below zero. Dallas won't see a high temperature lift out of the 20s. And come Monday, this cold makes it to the northeast. Texas power grid operator ERCOT has issued a weather watch for multiple days next week. Some of the far south and kind of along the coast that are not going to get as cold as kind of those in the interior in the northern parts of the state. And so that'll help out demand for the for the entire state. Now the storm is expected to move into Chicago and Milwaukee on Friday. We could see snow rates of one inch an hour in Chicago. Robert Ray, Fox Weather. Coming up in sports, the Missouri Southern Lions women's basketball team looks to win seven straight games. Plus, Pitt State basketball looks to bounce back after a loss. Brock Baldwidge has those highlights and more. Starting this month, public school students in the nation's most populous state will be required to learn about media literacy, which will require a big dose of AI. Fox's Eben Brown has more in our Fox on Tech series. In today's politically charged world, the term media literacy packs quite a punch. Some see it as a way of indoctrinating kids. Others as a vital tool for spotting so-called fake news. Now the Golden State is putting both theories to the test. A new California law requires students K-12 through to learn media literacy in public school, a move being applauded by most ed tech experts. What we're talking about is the ability to determine when information is more or less likely to be truthful and trustworthy. It's pretty basic, and I think it's something that everyone can agree is a useful life skill. A big part of the program will involve artificial intelligence on both ends of the spectrum. Students will be shown how AI is impacting the media landscape by personalizing content, but they'll also need to use that same AI technology to avoid trouble spots online. Take a pragmatic, um, holistic approach and look at uh, AI as a source of media content that needs to be critically analyzed. 
Um, but then also we can use AI to, to create scenarios that help us learn how media can misinform us. Ultimately, most students today are digital natives who grew up with the Internet and social media, meaning they're in a unique position to learn not just which websites to avoid, but how to make those decisions for themselves. So the student can determine, like, what are the, what are the symptoms here? What are the aspects of this content that make me believe that it's trustworthy or not. California joins just three other states, Delaware, New Jersey, and Texas, in requiring media literacy in public school. In Miami, Evan Brown, Fox News. Well, coming up, an iconic brand of gum has chewed its last after more than a century on store shelves. A piece of my childhood just died. That's what one Reddit user wrote after learning that Fruit Stripe gum has been discontinued. The Candy Isle mainstay has been around for more than half a century. Fruit Stripe gum maker Ferrara Candy announced the news in a statement. That's according to the Food and Wine magazine. The company said fans of the product may still be able to find it at certain retailers where it remains in stock. I'm going to miss that gum. That's our time for tonight. Thanks for joining us. We'll leave you with video of a lion cub at the Fort Worth Zoo. Have a great night and an even better tomorrow.